sunrise over the beautiful Lake Atitlan. This is how you start a morning here in Guatemala. Good morning guys and welcome back to another video here from Guatemala. Today we are in Lake Atitlan and we're currently at a viewpoint. I don't know the name. I, 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 it's too hard to pronounce. I'm just not going to even try because it's in the local Suhuchi language. But look at that view behind me. You can see the volcanoes, the clouds just waking up over the town. You can see San Juan below me. And actually from the viewpoint, you realize San Juan's actually a really, really small town. It's not that big at all. You've got the volcanoes, you've got the sunrise, you've got the entire lake over there. And it is just absolutely incredible how beautiful this place is. That has got to be one of the most beautiful sunsets I've seen in my life. You can see the towns waking up, you can see the lake waking up, you can see the mist sort of moving on to the land and unfortunately the clouds are still here but you know what it was a pretty good sunrise far 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 in the distance. You can even see some of the other volcanoes here in Guatemala earlier. There was a little bit of an eruption but I didn't manage to capture it but it's just beautiful here. This viewpoint it's really interesting is that on the floor they painted it to sort of demonstrate traditional local Guatemalan life. So here you've got a flower market with different types of flowers that they're selling and then here you've got like a bean, I think maybe it's like coffee beans or seeds or something like that. So it's basically portraying and representing Guatemalan life here on the floors of the viewpoint on these wooden planks. Now in the past, this was literally just a hill. There would be a cross, which you can see at the center of the viewpoint, but then they decided to renovate and build up this place. So now you've got all these painted planks and everything. It's a pretty easy hike to get up here from San Juan. It took me about, I would say 10, 15 minutes from the bottom and then to get from the bottom to the towns another maybe 10 minutes. So it wasn't that bad at all. And with this view, I would say that is absolutely worth it. The interesting thing about Lake Atitlan is that it used to be this huge super volcano. The lake itself is actually the crater of this massive volcano from a very, very long time ago that erupted. And then it just left this huge indention that basically is where the lake is today. And even today there are still volcanoes around the lake. I mean, you can see right behind me, there are like one volcano there. There's another one in the distance there. There's supposed to be another one behind that one, but there's a ton of volcanoes here. So this is a very volcanic place. Now, from what I understand, a lot of these volcanoes haven't erupted for a while. So we're pretty safe, but especially the volcanoes farther back, which are like closer to Antigua and Guatemala City, those do explode and they're not going to affect us because we're pretty far away still, but it's still amazing how geographically active this place is, how you have volcanoes erupting and yeah, everywhere you look, there's basically a volcano, which adds to the beauty and the skyline of Lake Atitlan. We've made it back down to the town of San Juan de la Laguna and with this bright sun, it's actually pretty warm. This is the first time since coming to Guatemala where I can actually say I feel warm, that I'm not shivering and trembling from the cold. So this is a good, good experience. Hopefully the weather stays this way until sunset. I'm just praying that that happens. But we're gonna go ahead and start exploring more of San Juan. <laughs> oh, 
All right, first stop of the day, we've come to learn about how honey is made here in Guatemala. This is Shuna Cub. Well, Shuna Cub is the place in San Juan if you want to learn about how honey is made. Now they've got a lot of bees at the back of the museum here, but at the front you've got these like beautiful demonstrations to show you about the bees and the most interesting part is they have this sort of, they have a lot of good photo opportunities here. You can open the door here and it literally leads you to nowhere. It's just a mural <laughs> that has like the man and you can take photos here. It's really, really nice. It's a really good spot. Um, and they've tried to keep it as local, but at the same time, they've made it more attractive as like a tourist option. But at the same time, it's really, really local. It's I'm the only person here, but we're going to go ahead to the back now and we're going to go and check out the bees. I hope they don't sting me. So let's get our fingers crossed and go into the bee garden. So here at Shunakab, they have five different types of bees. And these five different types of bees, they all don't sting. So they don't have a stinger. So actually, I don't have to really be that scared because, you know, the bees can come around and fly at me, but they're never going to sting me. Now, why is that special? Because, because these bees don't sting, bees that don't have the stinger don't produce sweet honey. They produce honey that's agridulce or it's like kind of sour bitter and kind of sweet. Whereas those honeybees with the stingers, they're the ones that produce the sweet honey. Now the honey produced here in Guatemala that's supposed to be agridulce, that's not completely sweet and that's produced by these bees that don't have stingers, that honey is more medicinal. So she was telling me that this type of bee right here that's supposed to be in this box here, they produce a type of honey that's really good for the eyes and the cataracts. So depending on what type of bee is making the honey, each honey has its own medicinal properties and the bees themselves are different from the other type of bees. One thing I also realized is that the bees here in Guatemala are really, really small. They almost look like flies, but they're actually bees. And when you get close, you can see the bees flying back into their hives, carrying the little sort of pollen dots that they're gonna use to make honey. So it's really, really interesting. But I had no clue that here in Guatemala, honey would be so different and that it would have so many different characteristics depending on what type of bee it is and what type of honey it is because each type of bee and each type of honey has its own uses and it's very, very interesting. Next stop of the day here in San Juan, we've come to Artesanos de San Juan. Let's go inside and check it out. I'm in love with all these tours of the culture here in San Juan. This place is absolutely amazing. They tell you how the whole process starts. So from the cotton, from the actual plant, they have to take out the seeds from the cotton until it gets to just the cotton itself. Then they go and sort of bang it out with some wooden sticks to make it really, really smooth, which is interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. And then they tell you about the whole weaving process and then how they turn the actual cloth into your scarves, your shirts and everything. And, and the whole process is really, really difficult. You have to be really trained in that. And she was just showing us how she was making a scarf and how it was like hung up to a wall and they had all the tools to sort of push it down and, and weave it through. It's so, so interesting and so informational. What I didn't even realize is that there are actually two types of cotton. There's the normal white cotton, and then there's like the brown cotton. And the brown cotton is the one that, that's naturally colored, but the white cotton, they add color to it. Now, yesterday we had looked at how different plants and different leaves made different colors in the cloths. But here, what they did is they actually showed you how they turned that into the color. If you're looking for understanding how Guatemalan textiles are made. 
that is the perfect place to go to. Next stop here in San Juan, we've come to a local Guatemalan traditional medicine shop. Let's go ahead and check out the garden. This is a really interesting garden. There's a lot of little plants and herbs that they've been using for thousands of years by the Mayans here in Guatemala for medicines. And some of them are turned into tea, some of them are turned into paste. But you can see all the different types of plants they have their scientific name and then their like more common Spanish name. But they've got tons and tons of all these plants. They've also got a store where they're selling some of the medicines and the teas, lots and lots of teas. And they even have explanations telling you if you have like stomach problems, you get this tea. If you have like breathing problems, you get this tea. So they have all of it laid out for you basically to consider which medicine, which tea to get here. But it's fascinating that they just have this entire garden with all these herbs to basically show you what Guatemalan traditional medicine is like. Well, once again, we have come down to the docks here for sunset. And unfortunately, just like yesterday, it's all super, super cloudy. The good thing is it's not raining, so not everything's wet. I'm not drenched. The benches, the walkway isn't drenched. But today is a little bit busier. We've got more people, more boats, but hopefully let's get some epic shots of the lake from the dock. Well guys, unfortunately, once again, the weather has completely failed us. I mean, look at those clouds right behind me. That is, that means rain is coming and it doesn't look good. Luckily, we didn't get caught in the rain, but I'm fairly confident within the next 10 minutes, it's gonna start raining like crazy. There is no sunset here. Like there just won't be a sunset because there's no way this is gonna clear out. You can see the dark clouds just rolling in. So that's the weather of Lake Atitlan when you come during rainy season. You don't get a clear sky, but it's still beautiful. It still has its own unique sort of beauty to it. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys in today's video. It's been an amazing day here in San Juan. I have to say, San Juan de Laguna is so far becoming one of my favorite destinations in Guatemala. I love how there's so much culture. You can see how bees uh, make honey. You can see how the weaving is done. There's just so much culture. And of course, there's a beautiful viewpoint right over there. Tomorrow, we're gonna continue exploring Lake Atitlan, but we're actually leaving San Juan tomorrow. We're going to visit another town because remember, Lake Atitlan is this huge volcanic crater with tons and tons and tons of little towns dotted around. So to truly get a glimpse of what Lake, Lake Atitlan is like, you, you need to visit these other towns. And that's exactly what we're gonna do over the next couple of days. But it's been a beautiful stay here in San Juan. I would highly recommend if you get the chance and you're here in Lake Atitlan, at least spend one night here. It's a beautiful place. It's a small, tranquil, calm little town. And it's just beautiful. And it's not as touristy. There's really not that much sort of tourist presence here. So for me, San Juan is probably one of the most beautiful spots on the lake. I would highly, highly recommend it if you do come here to Lake Atitlan. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. That is going to be the last video from San Juan in Lake Atitlan. But make sure to stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos coming your way. We've got a lot more videos here in Guatemala and I'm excited to continue sharing this beautiful country with you in the upcoming video. So make sure to stay tuned and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye guys.